What is the degree and leading coefficient of the given polynomial x times 4 minus x squared times then 2x plus 1? All right. So the first thing is when I look at this example, I realize that I do not have distinct terms. Okay. It's kind of in factored form. Now what I need to do and what I mean what I mean by that is you need a polynomial here to look something like this where you have some type of k value, call it k1 times x to some power, plus then some other coefficient k2 times x to some power. It doesn't have to be, you know, these ends don't have to be the same. Don't worry about the notation. All, all I want you to know is that we need to somehow simplify this or, you know, distribute these terms and multiply whatever is in the parentheses, meaning, or I should say between the parentheses, because it's a subtraction and addition inside the parentheses so that we have a form like this. It's got to be A plus B plus C plus D plus E. You know, something like that, okay? And it doesn't have to be added. They can be subtracted, but it has to be like distinct terms, okay? Now, let's do that here. So the first thing, there really is no right first step. What might be the easiest here is to first, you know, begin working, let's say, with uh, this. You know, foil these two binomials together. All right? So... Let's do, so it'd be four times then two X, right? That would give you then eight X. Okay, then it would be, oh, then it would be four times one, right? So that would be plus a four. Then you do negative X squared times two X, which would be negative two X to the third. And then you do the negative X squared plus one, you know, you multiply it. And then that would just be simply negative X squared. Okay, so you took care of everything there. So I'm going to put like a big bracket over that now because whatever is in red here is now the same thing as what I have in my bracket there. Don't forget to put your X there. Now notice how we're getting really close. You see how these are like distinct terms now? But the only problem is, oh man, I still have this X kind of be multiplied. No big deal, right? All we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to distribute now this X to everything, okay? So this would be 8X squared. Then take the X and multiply it by positive 4. So this is going to be positive 4 or plus 4x. Then take the x, and this is going to get a little messy with all these arrows, but I think you see the pattern, right? Negative then 2x to the fourth. And then take the x and multiply it by that term. That's going to be negative then x cubed. Okay? Let's move this down a touch. And now take a look at what you have. Do you see how now you have like four distinct terms here? Right? And I'll highlight them. This is one term. Okay? Include the sign here for the second. Include this sign here for the third, and then include this sign here for the fourth. You get four distinct terms, and that's kind of what I was trying to mention up here on the right-hand side. All right? Now, all we need to do to figure out the degree, okay? To figure out the degree of the polynomial, we first have to get into kind of like polynomial form, more or less. So the degree of the polynomial will be the highest, the highest power of the variable. And in this problem, it's an x. So just search the terms with x in it. Oh, they all have x. No big deal. Which one has the highest power of x? Right, that's pretty easy. Boom, right here, this term. Hi you want to highlight that whole thing and box the whole thing. Okay, so the highest term, or excuse me, the highest power here is going to be to the fourth power. And therefore, the degree of the polynomial is going to be the fourth degree. Or degree four, whatever you want to say it. Now, that's the first step. Then to figure out now the leading coefficient, you have to take a look at your highest degreed term. Degreed, I might have made that word up, but it sounds good. Okay, your highest degree term. And you want to look at then the leading coefficient value. Now, the reason why I had you include the sign is because it is important. It is included in the leading coefficient, okay? So what you want to do now is you want to look at this as like the variable, right? X with its power. And then the other portion, the negative 2, is going to be then the leading coefficient. Okay? So that's all it is, negative 2. That would be the leading coefficient, and it was a fourth-degree polynomial. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Hopefully that helps. And if it did, like and subscribe. Maybe tell your classmates. I look forward to helping you with the next problem. I'll see you then.